Okay, recording started. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins uh, UX SIG meeting. We are the 9th of June. Um, I'm adding in the Zoom conversation the link to the agenda notes for the newcomers or everyone who don't have it. Don't hesitate to join us on the IRC channel if you see this recording and want to react. Uh, so I'm Damien Duportal, I'm gonna replace Mark uh, for this one because Mark Wait is not available uh, this time. Uh, so hello, Jan, hello, Rick, hello, Tim. We are the four of us. Uh, first step, uh, let's just check agenda review uh, on the topics. Uh, thanks, Uli, for, bring, uh, for adding the new topics. So let's see uh, if all the topics are listed and then we can proceed. So the first topic that we're gonna cover will be the pull request dashboard. Is it still okay for you, Uli? Um, yes. The second topic is about the new release of the eChart API plugin, including Bootstrap 5 and a lot of more changes. Is that topic uh, still to be covered today? Yeah, it's okay. Cool. A demo of Azure AD user group picker by Tim. Is it still uh, okay for you? Uh, collaboration with open source design by Oleg. Oleg told me he won't be available to join. So I propose that we move that topic unless someone has a question or something to replace him. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm removing this for another time. And finally, roadmap icon by Yuli. Is that still a... Yeah, I'm not sure I put it on the agenda because mm -hmm. we had some discussions lately about icons. So, okay. Yeah, that's actually someone... the topic of interest for me. Okay. Uh, that, that's why I attended this. So I, I don't know if we could discuss that a little further and then I can drop yeah. off after that, if that's possible. Yeah, that's fine. It's okay for me. Tim, is it okay for you as well? Yeah. Okay, so I'm moving that as first topic on the notes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so is there another topic to be brought to the agenda or should we proceed? We should proceed. Okay, so let's go. So roadmap icons. Uh, I let you take the mic, uh, Yuri and Jan. Yeah. So I just put it on the agenda because recently we had some discussions uh, about what what is going on with the icons. And currently, I think we are, have a little bit unfinished state in Jenkins. So we have the new status icons for build failed, success and unstable. And we have new weather icons. And I think uh, Tim and Felix started the work on the icons. And yeah, now we have yeah, only a, sh a short piece of Jenkins converted with a new style. And one thing which is important we can discuss is what is the total roadmap for icons. This is one point. And the other point is the point that uh, Jan is uh, talking about, uh, that the current icon set for the weather icons is not really, yeah, useful for most of the users. So this is not related to the roadmap of the icons, but it's related to some icons that we already did change. So maybe uh, if you can say something about the icons you are, you know, or you have the problems with the current icons, Jan, maybe it's a good idea to talk now. Um, sure, I'll just put in the chat if I can here. Um, doesn't seem to, there we go. Um, um, if you guys can okay. see that and share that, that's a, a link to my comment, which is actually the first hidden comment um, where I made my observations about the, the suggested modifications. Um, you know, the, the basic thoughts are, we think we're all familiar with these icons because we see them all over the place. And yet the ones with Jenkins seem to, to be confusing to people, I think primarily because they're uh, one monochromatic 
two not actually uh, consistent amongst themselves and and three slightly different to any sets that we've seen before um, so uh, I outlined a series of uh, suggestions on on how to improve them on the assumption that we want to keep that uh, min minimalist modern set of icons. Uh, so I, I don't have uh, a disagreement with replacing the existing set uh, and not uh, particularly opinionated, I think, as to what kind of icons or the, the usability of them. There's been some comments uh, somewhere else about using uh, uh, temperature scale or just putting the, the raw number. So I don't have any thoughts on that, but what I did put up is, is a series of sets for comparison and, and some suggested modifications, um, which are the, the six bullet points there. Uh, the, the two thoughts at the end are one is, let's make sure we're, uh, consistent in terms of font uh, and line weight and so on uh, across this icon set, the build I status icon set, and any other um, icons or symbols that we've got. Uh, and, and the other suggestion on there was to have specific cases for 100% and 0%. And so that's why I displayed a series of seven icons instead of uh, the five that were presented. So um that's my thoughts uh i like the 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 final style with a lighter line weight um the symbols themselves you'll see are are uh, consistent across all the sets uh with you know repeated um repetitions of the icon in terms of the sun being identical the clouds being identical or scaled and so on so that, that's all I have to say on that. Uh, in terms of the roadmap, that's a decision for people with uh, more experience and, and more input into how Jenkins should look. So thank you. OK, thanks. Um, sounds clear. Uh, thanks for also proposing something. There has been examples and there are actionable items. Um, so I've put, in the, I've put the note in the agenda. I might need help, uh, Tim Oli, on uh, how usually how this kind of request work. Is it uh, a road for Ayan to help us contribute? Do we need to ask for help? Is there some work that people already started on that topic? And, and I'll just add to, if you don't mind, uh, the reason I put in these specific suggestions and motivations was because it appeared that someone else with skill uh, was going to start working on the icons. Um, and there was no direction kind of given as, as to which way to go. So that's why I threw it out there. Yeah, so the UX work that was being done by Cloudbase at the time kind of stopped about this time. So this was kind of the last thing that was being done. Um, and then the person who's working on it kind of rotated off. Um, so it's really just down to a contributor who's interested, who's got time and is able to do it right now. So if anyone, if anyone opens a pull request, it'll definitely be re reviewed and looked at. Um, there's been plenty of designs that look good on there, especially some of the work that you've done. Um, so I think these icons were sourced from the, the current ones came from the uh, material theme for Jenkins. They they were just grabbed as the material theme had been around for quite a while. They didn't find a good source of the, this, this sort of icon elsewhere. It's not really in a lot of in other products, at least not in the same way, but it was just trying to replace um, what was currently in Jenkins with a similar if fish feeling, but with more modern icons. Okay, so does that mean that we need a call for contribution for people with a pure UI uh, or design skills there? Since we have proposal and direction, is there a... We need someone to either, either to create new SVGs probably. 
I'm okay. not sure what, what those are, what you did with those icons, Ian, whether they you were just using them in a Photoshop tool and recoloring them, or whether it was done in, a, in an SVG editor design application. No, those were um, just copy and paste from the links. So from the three different uh, websites, uh, Mike Afford, who designed the, or worked for the, the BBC, produced a BBC-like set of weather symbols, and there's a link there um, to his sets. Um, it's a royalty-free set for $20 or 20 pounds if, um, if that's an option. Uh, the other ones uh, the, come from uh, CNN uh, and AccuWeather.com. Um, so I basically uh, just pulled them from, from the resources. They're all, uh, I can't remember now. I think uh, Mike Afford produces PNGs. Um, the others actually might be SVG. I can't remember right now, mm -hmm. but it was just a copy and paste uh, of the pictures in there. I don't have any skills with uh, UI tools, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the first ones was one that might've just in that thread, just recolored the existing one. If you go up to one of the first couple of comments, Damien. Mm. Yep. Mm. Is it the one from Thomas? No, I don't think it's that one. Oh, yeah, okay. The... Yeah, that one there. So I think that's the existing one, just recolored. Um, so yeah, he just changed it with a paint tool. Um, yeah, okay. I don't think you'd need a lot of experience to change the colors. Um, if someone wants to give that a go and see what that looks like. How do you feel about that, Jan? Would you be wanting to try to contribute at least starting with the color? Well, I've never had to play with an SVG tool. Uh, and I know there was a, a user, Vincent, um, or Vincent, uh, who did make some suggestions. I thought he might be attending here. Um, I was not thrilled with the icons he offered, but uh, if, if there's, a, there's an opportunity, I, I, he, he also mentioned that he had trouble reading the existing set. No, I missed that comment. The, the reason will be because it's in a sprite sheet. Um, it's easier to copy them out and possibly set the width and height on them while you're editing them. Well, I yeah, can't it's... make any promises, but I, I can. No, no, no problem. The, 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 my goal is not to force you or to ask you to sign with your blood. Uh, the question is only uh, completely open. No problem. Yeah. Um, I, I think if if there's agreement on on which way to go and, and maybe a phased approach of, OK, first, let's just uh, add color guidance as suggested to the, the original set. Um, and you know the second piece about applying some consistency to everything if there's a preference among uh i guess among the quorum <laughs> of which way to go in terms of uh, a final objective um you know do do the members here like the the heavier traditional bbc like the lighter modern BBC like CNN or or the the thin line AccuWeather. Um, I, th I think the color thing, there's consensus on applying the color aspect. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to write down the say to correct me if the note does not capture what we're seeing. So what about starting the colors? Um, Accessibility issue, and then um, design of the icons based on the different weather examples. Okay, so that yeah, um, 
as a proposal there so i will want to make a call a public call um, right now since uh, one month and a half there is a a big let's say a, a heated discussion on the french technical twitter about accessibility for the web there is a lot of uh, people doing web front development doing a big effort to share the knowledge about how to make um, uh, let's say websites accessible for people with uh, all the spectrum of disability that could be there, including color blindness. So that if it's okay for you, I will want to ask uh, some of these people uh, that might be in French speaking initially, and I will want to switch it back, but to ask for contribution or help, because maybe people with these skills could give us uh, professional advices on that, since this is an open source product, or at least give us direction. How would you feel about this? Um, specifically to the usability, I did have a separate response to Peter Leivendink further mm -hmm. down, um, yep. where there's actually a number of links in there under the Sonar Cube section. Um, I don't know why the links don't really show up too well. Um, yeah, Sonar Cube had the same issue uh, a couple of years ago, I guess, uh, and and so there's three or four four separate links there, three links, I think, usage of colors, accessibility issues, uh, Sonar 11959 that have some information. Um, and then an article on uh, defective color vision and traffic signals, which actually has a, a good analysis on the color spectrum. Um, the reasons for the four different types of color blindness um, and how to pick colors that uh, don't overlap on the spectrum. Okay, so that means. But certainly if, if like you said, there's uh, further discussion in, in the French Twitter, uh, accessibility is a major issue on the web um, and there don't seem to be universal standards for accessibility. Um, Yep. I did point out to Peter, I don't think color blindness was an issue specifically for the weather because there is nothing uh, red, green, um, blue no, doesn't seem was, to be a problem and it's just the contrast, perhaps. Yeah, I think he was, he was raising an issue about the build status icons, which this wasn't the issue to talk about that on. Okay. Yeah, so I suggested a different um, issue to track that. Okay, fair. Um, not sure if it's linked. Okay, so call for action. That means that uh, if anyone seeing that recording, only one present there. Uh, if you know anyone that will be willing to try to at least start on a, uh, since it looks like the issue has a consensus about the colors. If I make, I am, if I'm correct. If anyone is okay to try to propose something. Uh, did I miss something on that part? The, the the perimeter will be color on the changing the colors of the existent icon sets, and in parallel uh, discussing about okay uh, pushing forward the consensus. In particular, it looks, sounds like that the new build icons on a separate issue. I need to find the correct link. There is no link for the build icons. I just suggested there should be. A separate issue. Uh, okay. I can create one if you like. Uh, yeah, that will be awesome. Okay, I'll do that after this meeting. Mm -hmm. And put, put the link on the IRC channel if you are in it. Uh, and I'll update the meeting notes with uh, the link. Build status icon. Okay, so that's oh, 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 is it done generally? Uh, is it we write this done or do we write a call for action? Uh, team already, I'm not at ease with uh, yeah, I think uh, you don't need to write anything else. So, okay, need help to implement this. 
Okay, thanks for reporting on all these uh, details and the research you did, Diane. That's, uh, that's a lot of, uh, I think, useful information that should help the people that will be willing to implement this. So uh, I think one thing which is still open a little bit for me is uh, what's going on with the icons. Is anybody making any new icons or is it now this that we stop with the unfinished state in Jenkins? Uh, this is a little bit disappointing, I think, that we started to convert a lot of icons. And now, yeah. I understand. The, yeah, I understand the Felix. team members left Jenkins project, and now we are, yeah. have this unfinished state. So mm. it looks now yeah, like a little bit weird statues. Jenkins. So, um, yeah. I, what, was it uh, Felix who was working on that part one year ago? Is that correct? Yeah, Felix and uh, Joseph. Yeah, Joe and. Uh, I know that Felix doesn't have any more time right now to contribute. Yeah. Um, I can still ask him directly. Uh, oh, Felix, if you listen to the recording afterwards, don't stay to let us know if you are willing to contribute back on that part. For the other, I don't know them. So, yeah, sounds like the status is it's unfinished job. Okay. So it's up to the community to provide additional icons now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, best yeah. Here. There was talk about like creating a repo with all the icons that need replacing and matching them up and then making calls for contributors to um, start on that, but none of that ever none of that ended up happening. Um, but yeah, there was a bit of resistance about doing partial transfer. Like starting doing them one by one because it would look quite inconsistent. So it was a, it starts small in a self-contained component and then try and do a wider um, rollout. Yeah. I did have a question in terms of the roadmap here. Um, so the old series of icons was a, a GIF and a PNG. Uh, the next iteration of icons, I believe, was there's a separate set of SVG files for icons, and the new ones is a packaged set. Um, so is it defined in the roadmap that the packaged sprite set SVG file is the way to go? It doesn't have to be in like the packaged SVG sprite sh shape. Any anyone can provide them, but SVG is what was being used um it's easier to scale and style um and works quite well with different themes as well um but yeah that's what's being used at the moment uh, i saw uh, i can't remember where it was yeah. i saw someone telling on a channel, I, I can't even say if it was a public or private one, but uh, about the fact that SVG cannot have tooltip. Mm. That can. I, 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 I haven't checked, but I remember that there might be some tooltip when you uh, move around the cursor on an icon. So I suggest this that I remember suggesting to that person to check and eventually open an issue about that because if it's the case, maybe it's technically possible, but it would be a regression. I haven't checked that. I should try with the to compare with our version, but that in that case that will be interesting to challenge the usage of SVG. Unless we remove the tooltip for the icon, that could happen also. But yeah, my knowledge is close to zero there. Yeah, that means that we need people to work on that because the status as really stated, uh, the work done uh, last year is the current stat is now released and doesn't look like there will be more effort. So we need uh, new people with that skills to help. Yeah, it's not necessary. I mean a lot of it's just ma matching icons up, or if, if ones are existing, pu pulling them together. Um, 
a lot of it, mo most of it doesn't require new icons to be created. It was mostly being pulled from mater material design um, and some of Font Awesome um, was where they were mostly being sourced from, but it doesn't mean that they have to come from there. It can come from elsewhere or be created as long as the license is appropriate. Okay. Where will be the starting point if we have a new contributor that want to find high? Is there a starting issue. an easy yeah issue? Probably need someone to drive it really. Okay. Someone who wants really to coordinate it and um yes, set up a way of coordinating and figuring out whether it's do a big bang, a whole bunch of icons at once, or whether it's go component by component again. Okay, so that means, yeah, if you are willing to contribute, then manifest yourself on the IRC or for an issue, because that means synchronization then. Okay. Is there anything else on that topic that you will want to, to discuss? Thank you, Yen, for being there, for reporting. We'll try to find someone to implement these ideas or at least improve the situation. We can switch to the next topic. So Yuli, it's your, it's your turn to speak about the pull request dashboard. Yes, um, I think um, the best thing about the pull request dashboard is that we provide another demo but uh, today we are not ready to present a demo so i would like to postpone this uh, for the next meeting in two weeks so currently the state is that we have an implementation of a portlet for the code coverage plugin and the warnings plugin these portlets already have been merged uh, but they are not uh, part of a release yet of these plugins so what I'm trying to do is uh, to create a new release with of the warnings plugin and code coverage plugin, and then we can yeah show the portlets in action. So this makes more sense to wait another two weeks, and then we'll see how the portlets look like. So we are making a lot of progress, but still need some work for the next demo. Okay. Is there any blocker regarding the release or build process that you would need help on, especially no. given the incident? No, it's okay. It's cool. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Is there any question about that topic, precision details? No? Okay, so let's, thanks, Uli. Let's jump to the next topic about the yeah. new release of the eChart API plugin. Yes, this is uh, yeah another point for me. Uh, I finished now the eCharts API migration to Bootstrap 5. Mm -hmm. Also, Data Tables plugin has a new release this week, uh, which is compatible with Bootstrap 5. And I released the corresponding Jenkins plugins today. So these new API plugins are now ready for download in Jenkins. Uh, the only thing what is still missing is the, uh, the usage of these plugins. Mm -hmm. That means the warnings plugin and the forensics plugin and the chair unit plugin, they all have trend charts that use the new API. And for all these three plugins, I created a pull request. And what I'm trying to do is to release the pull requests this week, at least for the warnings plugin and the forensics plugin. So they will appear in the update center quite soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, is there anything blocking you here that you could need help on? Not so far, it's just some work that needs to be done. Okay, thanks a lot. Is there any question or precision or question on that topic? How's the JUnit one going? I see you've been working on it for a while off and on. Yeah, um, 
I'm almost uh, done with it, at least for the functionality. Uh, the only thing is that currently some tests are breaking because of uh, different versions in Jenkins rule tests. So that the versions I'm using for the uh, UI plugins don't match with the BOM updates, so I need to fix these versions. But it is already working, so the JUnit uh, trend chart is also configurable now. So I hope, or well, I tried to finish this today, but uh, it, it didn't work up. So give me a little, some more days. Hopefully on the weekend, you have a pull request that can be merged, hopefully. Oh, sounds good. Sounds just good. one comment on the, uh, the eCharts API plugin. So I just pulled it up. Um, the pie chart immediately is red, yellow, green, uh, which would have the color blindness possibility that is yeah. mentioned by Peter. Um, yeah, which chart did you mean? Uh, so in the eCharts API, there's an example of a pie chart and mm -hmm. progress yeah. charts. Okay. And both yeah. of those have green, yellow issues. Okay. Uh, and so I will, let me just pull this up because it's worth yeah. putting in the, the chats. The, the, I'm not sure if you put the design link comment, mm -hmm. uh, traffic light comment. Five. Yeah, this is a good point. Uh, I think one, uh, yeah, one topic I would like to add uh, to the to the charting library uh, is to have some configuration of the colors we are using. So this is, I think, is something that we need to make for uh, Jenkins White. So I think we discussed it, uh, I think it's almost a year ago uh, with Felix about the a color map that we created for Jenkins that we also need a, a map for the charting tables. So if we create charts, we need to have a color map that is distinguishable and, and for color blindness, we need to be aware as well. So yeah. This. Yeah, so I posted that link in the uh, in the chat to the yeah. the traffic light issue. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know that this is a reference standard site per se, but it does describe the problem and and highlight some of the issues very well. So. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a look at it. So making the colors uh, configurable is possible but yeah it requires some additional work so two of the thoughts are one is it it's often just a matter of picking the right shade with the different weights of of the three colors uh, the other possibility that they suggest for traffic lights that certainly uh, applicable here is to apply a, a slight pattern in a different shade that would not be noticeable to most people unless you're colorblind if you scroll down near the bottom um, and they superimpose a pattern of an X uh, or an arrow as you can see in the, the red icons for new meaning in the top quarter panel. Okay, um, okay yeah. So you could do the same thing in terms of a hatch pattern, uh, a horizontal line, sorry, an X hatch, hatch pattern, a plus pattern, or a horizontal line for the three colors. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But anyway, that's what my thoughts on that, thank you. Yeah, maybe it would make sense to define some uh, your semantics for color. So currently we have, for instance, for warnings, I have uh, warnings with uh, severities or we have tests which are failing or tests which are okay. So maybe we need some 
a color semantics defined that we have a color that means okay a color that means a failure a color that means priority high and a color that means priority low and then we have a mapping of these semantics these words to a different color and a different user can select different colors if they want so maybe that would make sense in a way i'm not sure So because currently I think we have so many plugins which use so many different colors and yeah maybe it would make sense that the code coverage uses the same kind of colors as the warnings plugin and the JUnit plugin for instance. I'm not sure if that makes sense for you. That completely makes sense. Yeah I think it's more a matter of doing it that's the problem here yeah and for instance uh, tim created the the black or what is it the dark theme so maybe we need to change the colors for this dark theme as well so mm. that's a good point the team could might could be a way to help it Thanks for the pointer, uh, Ayan. I've had it on the meeting not the link you gave us. I tried to capture what we discussed. Let me know if it's not uh, clear if I did not capture it well. Thanks for the work, uh, Lee, by the way, because that's a lot of work. Um, is there any other question or feedback on that topic? Oh, cool. So let's go to the last topic of the agenda for today, demo of Azure AD Group Picker by Tim. Let me stop sure. sharing my screen. Okay, should be able to share if you need. Yep, I was just gonna share something I've been working on for a bit. Um, so Thank you'll you. see, next thing. And this is the Azure AD plugin. It's got an extension to the Matrix Auth plugin, which allows you to pick users, as otherwise they're just UUIDs, and then it's not very easy to work with. Um, but the problem with that is um, that the Jenkins API for interacting with this is quite limited. Um, you can just you can just return a string, and then it gets straight displayed here. You've got no way of customizing the output. Um, or supplying other information without it being displayed. So if I type, this is using like sample data um, in an Azure AD sandbox. Um, so it's just going to say exactly the string here. Um, but there's a problem that you can't differentiate whether it's a user or a group, um, which means there's no way to um, validate specifically which one you want here, and which means we have to try both and it ends up in a whole bunch of log spam and a whole bunch of extra queries than what we want. So I try that, but then if I want a group, it just looks exactly the same here. Um, so I've just been playing around um, with a web component um, that Microsoft provides. And I just want to show um, what I've managed to get it to. So you click in here and, and it loads all the users that you work with normally, but something's decided not to work right now. What's going on? Let me just restart it. I think it's cache token may have got cached for a little, not a little too long. Just be a second. You can still blame the Fastly outage for the demo going wrong. No problem. Uh, so yeah, you tap in here and it brings up all the three people that the currently logged in user works with um, using a like a contact API. Um, and, then it, and then you can search for a specific person and it comes up with the person, their profile picture, uh, their position, um, you can do multi-select now, so rather than doing them one by one, um, there's, you can do groups. Um, and so on the client side, I've got 
access to the whole user object. So I can see whether they're a user or a group. Um, and I've got the access to their ID and everything. Um, and if I click here, you can then click on the user um, to check all the details and make sure it's the right person uh, rather than just their name. So especially if you've got multiple people with the same name. Um, so I don't have multiple in this, but it's very easy to have multiple people with the exact same name. That means instead of looking up the ID, you get their profile picture um, and you can also see their email as well. Um, and that was in there. So I can remove them and then I can click add and I can add your multiple of them at once. Uh, and because that's a user, it's automatically been validated um, and that's a group. So it's not possible right now to make sure it's all, um, but there's some work going on to sort that out. Um, and then that will work as well. So I can just add that and that. And and it all works. So this is what I posted on the mailing list about a um, proxying stuff before. Um, so it supports client side or proxy or whatever you want, um, but I'm just proxying all the calls that this, this is a web component, um, completely, it's just a package you install um, and it makes all the API calls to Microsoft Graph. Um, and so I just created something that just proxies all the API calls um, through just using OK HTTP and using the do dynamic call from Stapler, which lets you handle absolutely everything yourself. So credit, having a do dynamic method, um, you just completely handle it. And I just pass off the call and respond um, and just write the response back into the Stapler response. Um, had a quite weird one with the picture and that the picture was they were trying to just trying to get encoded with UCFA and didn't work. I eventually figured it out that the char set, even though the, if I click through the code in OK, OK HTTP, um, it says it looks at the char set to, to, to detect it. It wasn't working, so I've ended up just hard coding the char set, um, and that fixed the photos. Um, and then I've got some caching of the token and using caffeine, um, which as you just saw didn't fully work. So I might just evict the cache if it fails um, or try harder at calculating stuff. I should just show the JavaScript quickly. Um, so looking at the, uh, here, so you see here, this is a web component. It just looks like a HTML element. Um, this is the proxy for item configuration for it. And then there's also, um, Somewhere down here. Here. Uh, yeah, sorry, management people picker. So this is the component that I'm using and the configuration that's being done on the component. So any type of user or group. So by default, it's just a user. Um, filtered to just security groups. And I think the default maximum showing is like five, those bumps up to 10. Um, and then um, there's a little bit of JavaScript. Um, it implements, so there's an event that it fires um, when selection changed. Um, so I use that, I've done a kind of bit of hand validation where if you don't put anything in, I'm showing up a message. Um, and then when you, on the selection change, it clears the message. Um, and apart from that, it's just changed the manual, the JavaScript that was here before, just changed into a for each and um, get the person and then the selected person, people as a person and I just get the display name and their ID out because that's kind of how the plugin stores them. So the actual stored user has a display name and an ID and the ID is parsed out of the user um, and it's the ID that's checked at login and authorization. But yeah, that is it. Anyone got any thoughts or questions? This uh, component to multiple, what I'm, to make this multiple selection, is this select two or is this a totally different web component? Uh, I haven't really looked, to be honest. It's, a, oh. it's, called, the, it's called the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Um, it's a just pre-packaged, fully self-contained um, JavaScript components. Um, it's 
So I think it's implemented with a list. Let me just check. Um, it, it uses the shadow DOM quite a lot. Um, it's a whole bunch of, actually it's a whole bunch of divs. So yeah, I think it's a custom component. Um, yeah, fully, yeah. Yeah, a lot of shadow DOM and every, every each one of those is a div. Looks really nice. Uh, as a former uh, and uh, still uh, Jenkins administrator, when I had to use AD, yeah, uh, thank you for that contribution back because that one uh, would have helped me years ago. Mm, yeah, really so this is for your AD, which is the like the cloud based version, which Microsoft pushes everyone towards. Um, so using Graph API and everything rather than. Um, well, in OpenID Connect or SAML for authentication rather than um, LDAP. But yeah, it's a lot nicer than working with AD. Impressive. Thanks a lot. Is there no, any sorry. question details on that topic? Okay, are there any new subjects to be brought on last minute? No. Cool. So if I understand correctly, I will have to stop the recording now. And as soon as it will be generated, I will upload it on the channel. Uh, the meeting notes have been updated. Don't hesitate if I forgot something. I can still update it afterwards. And if it's OK, we can stop right now. Cool. Thanks for that. I've got to go. But have mm -hmm. a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.